I said I had time for one more, and I think I made a pretty darn good choice. What's up, everyone? Your boy here, Apollo, from Down, Down, Up, Up. And, of course, today it's time to talk about... Oh, oh right over his face. Disrespectful. Home Alone. This is probably regarded as a lot of people's favorite Christmas movie. And for a while, it was definitely mine. I loved watching this when I was a kid. Uh, at first, it was more just for the hilarious skits with Kevin trapping Marv and Harry into his little house of horror, so to speak. Oh my gosh, hilarious. From the blowtorch to Harry's head, to Marv slipping and falling, the nail through his foot. Oh my gosh, it's still one of just the most cringiest scenes for me. Uh, to Harry dressed like a chicken. Uh, to Marv screaming over the tarantula. It doesn't stop when you get there. But truth be told, there, it takes a lot of bill to get there. Like, there's a huge family story involved, of course, leaving Kevin behind. The family's reaction to it in Paris. Kevin's reaction to thinking he's wished his family away. And that's it. Done. I'm by myself. I got what I wanted. Or did you, child? Uh, Culkin does such a great job with Kevin. His performance is still so believable throughout the entire movie. And Catherine does such a great job as his mom, too. Like, you know she cares. She's willing to go to the ends of the earth to get to her son for Christmas. And, oh my gosh, the side characters, um, oh god, I'm already blanking on names for some reason. Uh, the uncle, hilarious character. Um, Buzz is such a numbskull, but honestly, one of my favorite parts in the movie is just when he is listing off different numbers when I think his sister is trying to count heads before they're going to the airport. And he's just, 11, 90 to 12. It, just the bland face. And waiting for a reaction. I don't know why, but that still gets me. Joe Pesci as Harry, though, is one of the best things ever. Um, Stern as uh, Marv, fantastic. They work so well together, and it's no wonder that a sequel was made. I'm looking forward to, obviously, giving my results on that. Um, excuse me, my review on that. And yes, obviously, I'm going to be watching the second one. I love both to death. But the first one really still holds up. It's a lovely tale, and if I have to point out some criticism, it's very brief. For example, there's a scene in the movie where Kevin and I guess one of his cousins is in Buzz's room, and Kevin's asking if he can sleep there for the night. Buzz rejects him, and then all of a sudden goes to the, well, not exactly, he looks out to the window supposedly seeing an old man who is shoveling snow and putting salt on the sidewalk. But from the angle he's at, you know there's no way he saw him. If you've seen the movie, think about it. Maybe go to the scene, check it out. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. If he heard something, acceptable. If he's seen it, no. But then my biggest pet peeve, watching this again. There is a point in time where a police officer goes to Kevin's home, knocks on the door, rings the bell. Kevin is terrified because he just stopped burglars from coming into his house. He's under his parents' bed, and he has no intention of moving from that position. Either he's on the bed or he's under the bed. And the police officer clearly does not make any effort whatsoever to get into the house and comfort the boy, uh, give him some information. I don't know. I don't know what his job was going to be, but I was hoping at the very least he'd try. The Christmas lights are on. He's been told that the child's in the house and the lights are all on. I did not notice that watching it all those other times that the lights were actually on in the house all over. And the police officer just doesn't care. He radios in, uh, telling them, telling the officers to tell the parents, tell them to count their kids again. Buddy, the lights are on in the house. You had one job. But to be fair, he failed, and the plot continues, and it's just a fantastic movie. I can't give it enough credit. But there you go. I actually found some criticism with it that uh, does annoy me, because you heard the passion in my voice. I don't like that. I will point it out. But I love Home Alone. If you haven't seen it, uh, what have you been doing exactly? Uh, you let that sink in. This movie is one I feel everyone should watch around the holidays. Or, honestly, you don't even have to count it as a huge Christmas movie. I could watch this year-round and not get bored. The, the build is so interesting for me, too. I love seeing all of the Christmas movies on in the background. Like, there's The Grinch in the background. Um, there's even, I think, a Johnny Carson show in the background when Kevin's about to go to sleep. One thing I just noticed for the first time watching it this year, 
Um, Miracle on 34th Street is playing at the beginning, well, not the beginning, but when the parents leave and Kevin's just getting up and walking around the house wondering where everyone is, and he puts the TV on, I think, in the kitchen. I never knew that it was that movie. Only because I think I've watched the movie only twice. If you uh, saw my review on Miracle on 34th Street, you'd know that. Catching up, staying ahead. But lovely, lovely stuff in the background for me to enjoy. There's another one, but I already forget what it was. Ah... If, if there's an MVP award to this movie, though, it goes to uh, the movie in the background that Kevin has where they're gangsters and one of them is shooting the other and he delivers his lines so well. And that laugh is probably one of the funniest laughs I've ever heard in my life. If you don't know what I'm talking about, obviously you have not seen the movie. What is it again? Dirty Angels with Filthy Souls? Or just angels with dirty souls. Something along that line. Hilarious. I can't give it enough credit. Home Alone is without a doubt one of the widely more known Christmas movies. But for a good reason. In my opinion it's not over commercialized. Except the fact that there were another three pointless sequels. If you even want to call them sequels, the second Home Alone was a sequel. But from then on, I would just call them, I would call three and four, excuse me, three and five reboots. I don't know if there's a six. I've only seen five once. Three I actually like, but I wouldn't watch again. Uh, four didn't even feel like a movie to me, but four, I guess you can count as a sequel because they recognized the character names but it wasn't the same actors. There is one actor I liked in four. I could go on forever about it, but bottom line, one is a classic. If you've watched it, stick to it. It always delivers. The comedy's on point. The family is on point. The story's on point. There's nothing overly blown about this. Home Alone will never disappoint. Five out of five. Ten out of ten on the acting. Amazing choices. Give it a watch if you haven't seen it. And if you have... Watch it again, because Paulo told you to. Have a great day, everyone. I think this is going to be my last review of the week. Uh, not looking too full for the weekend. I know there's a takeover this weekend. I might do uh, I might do predictions for it, but I'm more or less just letting wrestling take me over right now and try to escape it in a different way. Same goes for Christmas, but we'll see. I'll definitely have my reviews and predictions back for uh, Rumble season, but we'll see about this Sunday. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, see you all next week for some more reviews. It's been a fun week. Like, share, subscribe. Again, shoot me your favorite Christmas stuff if we haven't gotten to it yet, because Home Alone was today. I've gotten through, I think this is number nine this week? I'm pretty sure this is number nine. And for today, for example, I just put my uh, results video up for uh, The Simpsons Christmas. Check that out. Let me know what you think. Have you seen it? Same goes for Home Alone. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you Monday for some more. Keep it real.